Our opening hymn this morning is going to be number 370, Victory in Jesus. Please rise as you're able and join us. Again, that's number 370 in your hymnal. I heard an old, old 
story how a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary to save a wretch like me i heard about his warning of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sin and won the victory sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power. and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and seal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Sweet victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He taught me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion. He has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing, and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. In Jesus, my Savior, forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is to Him He plunged me to victory Good morning, church family. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said this at the early service, and uh, I should say, it, uh, I guess here now, it's good to be in the house of the Lord unless you're an Alabama fan, right? So uh, I, saw, I saw some Tennessee orange out there earlier this morning, so I figured I'd how to throw it out there. But uh, it's good. So excited to see you, and I'm glad that uh, you are here with us. Uh, you know, I'm excited any time that so we as believers uh, come together, but yet, better yet, when we as a family, and uh, that's exactly what we are in this, uh, in this church, is a family coming together, uh, sinners uh, being able to come together and praise God uh, for that. So uh, with that, I've got a, a few announcements uh, that some have asked, and I made this my second announcement earlier. Uh, Pastor Chris uh, is not here this morning. Uh, he is feeling fine. Uh, he had some uh, family things to take care of this morning. He will be uh, here uh, this afternoon uh, for our meeting, but uh, he is not here uh, this morning. Uh, also, uh, in early, starting in early January, uh, we'll be starting our confirmation class. Uh, this is for all uh, children, kids who are sixth grade and older. Uh, if you know someone that fits that age, please let myself know, uh, or Christian, uh, or uh, Pastor Chris, uh, to do that. And then also, uh, today at 4 o'clock, we're having a congregational meeting. Uh, during this time, uh, our prayer and discernment team uh, will be making their recommendation uh, to the church 
Uh, and with that uh, said, uh, I just ask that you would continue to be in prayer uh, throughout this morning, throughout uh, that whole time there. Uh, and when you come to the meeting, uh, feel free to, uh, to ask questions. Uh, but just know that, uh, you know, even though we may not all see eye to eye and we may not all, <clears throat> depending on which way the church goes, uh, but uh, I ask that uh, when you speak to others, when you ask questions, uh, that you would do so with uh, a Christ uh, mindset, uh, speak in love, uh, be gentle to one another, uh, for we are all, uh, all believers uh, in all the body of Christ uh, to do that. So I ask, uh, please come out at uh, 4 o'clock uh, and hear that recommendation. Uh, that prayer, the prayer and discernment team has been meeting for the last few months. Uh, spent a lot of time hearing uh, a lot of uh, information, and uh, they'll be uh, making that recommendation. With that said, uh, this Tuesday at 6 o'clock, uh, we're having a special board of stewards meeting. Uh, so if you're on the board of stewards, that'll be at Farley Hall uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> and then I want to say also... Uh, there's a lot of things uh, for those that just worship with us on Sunday mornings. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, in the background uh, that, uh, that happen from ushers to greeters uh, to printing bulletins to, you know, just kind of making a, a, a Sunday morning uh, what it is. And one of the special ways, and I believe uh, one of the great ways to grow uh, a church is through your children uh, and through your youth ministry. Uh, and with that said, I want to say a special thanks to all of you uh, who work with our children and youth uh, to do that. I uh, also want to say to those that don't, uh, grandparents uh, and have grandkids, uh, this is a great opportunity for one Sunday a month that you can have an opportunity to, uh, to sit with children, uh, to love on them, uh, to share God's word uh, with, uh, once again, with your family uh, to do that. So if you uh, feel the Holy Spirit or just feel like, hey, I've got some time and I would love to help, uh, and in this area, please see Samantha on your way out today. Tyler, you got something about the cantata. Uh, yeah, so um, every December, on December 11th coming up this year, we're going to be doing our Christmas cantata, which is where the choir up here <laughs> and we have a couple of speakers. We're actually going to have some stringed instruments and some bluegrass instruments this year. We're going to have a mandolin and a guitar, and I'm trying to find somebody that plays stand-up bass. If you know anybody, please let me know. Um, uh, however, the choir always meets on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, and uh, when it comes to the cantata, you do not have to be a member of the choir all the time just to be in the cantata. We have a bunch of people that come and join us uh, just, just to rehearse and just because they enjoy that time of year and they enjoy doing the cantata. So if you are one of those people and you'd like to come out and join us and, uh, and, and do this cantata with us, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we meet on uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. I invite our ushers uh, to come down at this time. Uh, as we go uh, to the Lord in prayer, uh, last week uh, we lifted up Posey Rowe, uh, who was in a car accident, uh, a pretty uh, bad accident, and uh, she is doing much better uh, and at home. So let's please continue to remember uh, Posey Rowe. Uh, and then also, uh, I believe I mentioned last week, we have an Emmaus uh, walk coming up next month. We have uh, some members of our church who are working that walk, as well as some who are going on that walk. So please remember uh, the Emmaus walk. Uh, also, uh, Ralph McGee uh, is home from the hospital. He got home on Wednesday. I uh, continue to lift him up uh, in your prayers. And then uh, Pat Morris's brother, Steve Gregg, is having severe health issues. So please remember him. Uh, and that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, please continue to pray for our church uh, and uh, this afternoon uh, and beyond. Are there any other prayer concerns and or praises out there? Well, let's pray. God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for uh, just uh, being able to come together in your house, Lord, to be able to be uh, with our brothers and sisters whom we love. Lord, I thank you that uh, we have a family here at your church, and God, we are so thankful that we have a Father who loves us, who cares for us. Lord, that even last night while we were sleeping, that uh, our names were on your tongue and our names had crossed through your mind. Lord, I thank you that uh, you have gone before us. Lord, and for this morning as we talk about uh, Pentecost and we talk about uh, the third uh, part of the Trinity, uh, the Holy Spirit, God, I ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear your word. 
Lord, I pray that uh, we would um, be nudged, be inspired. Lord, that we would be uh, the body to this broken world. Lord, that we would be uh, so moved and, uh, Lord, that you would be able to use us to, to reach not just our community, uh, our families, or our schools, our neighborhoods, or to bring back that which is yours. Lord, that we can join in your effort. Lord, I thank you uh, for uh, being the great physician. Lord, I thank you for uh, Posey. I thank you for Ralph. Lord, I, and we lift up Steve uh, this morning and ask that uh, you would put your healing hand upon him. Lord, we lift up our Emmaus Walk and that community and, uh, Lord, all those who are working and uh, preparing the hearts on those who are about to go. Lord, this morning I ask that uh, your word would be proclaimed. Lord, that wherever that we are, that uh, you would help us to uh, silence the world and to hear nothing but your voice. Lord, thank you for the prayer that you've given to us that we can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just get to my grave. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Standing, would you read with me the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, heaven and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and it sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats, and as you do, go ahead and take out your hymnals. Uh, we're going to sing while you're seated. Go ahead and sing with us. Number 393, Spirit of the Living God. Again, that's number 393. We're going to sing it twice through. Thank you, Tyler and Eleanor. Every week they do a great job, and thank you for uh, helping us come into God's presence. This morning uh, we're going to continue uh, in Acts, and uh, last week uh, Chris uh, started and spoke to us uh, from Acts one. And for me, I'm kind of I'm one of those people. As I read the Bible, I'm always asking that question: you know, where do I fit in? Who would I be? Uh, what what would that look like? And, uh, you know, just as I uh, reread and uh, uh, preparing for today, and uh, we've been going through Acts, uh, <clears throat> you know, Jesus called his disciples, and, and he says, you know, head back to Jerusalem and to pray. 
And then he ascends uh, up into heaven. And I've always got to kind of imagine, like, I, you know, obviously to be with Jesus would be one of those uh, amazing things, and, and to walk with them, and to be one of the disciples. And I kind of, you know, fit between uh, Peter and Paul uh, in terms of uh, who I feel like I, w- I-, I would be. Uh, but I can't imagine, you know, just kind of that one day where, you know, Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, till the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is coming. And you remember that he promised that one is coming that will fill us with power. So I can't imagine, uh, you know, as he's saying that, and then he ascends into heaven. I can't imagine just kind of standing there, and here we're, you were walking with Jesus, and he's giving us, uh, you know, some final instructions and talking to us, and then all of a sudden, there he goes. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when you lose a balloon, like we have kids, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, one of my phobias, I hate balloons. I hate balloons being in my car. I'm always afraid they're going to pop and I'm just on the edge. And my kids had balloons. I was always like, mm, let's, just let that, let's just let it go. But as you let a balloon go and it just kind of floats up to the air, it's almost like you're kind of, you know, just stunned by it and just kind of watching it just go up into the clouds and seeing how far you can see before it disappears. I got to imagine that that was kind of what the disciples were feeling and what they were thinking as they watched Jesus ascend up into heaven. But then as he, as he does and, and, he, and he's out of sight, I can't imagine kind of, you know, as they begin to talk, he said, hey, we need to head back to Jerusalem. And when he start praying. I can't imagine, you know, some of their thoughts, or, you know, of, hey, the Holy Spirit's coming. Well, who's the Holy Spirit? Hey, we're going to get some power. You know, if I'm one of the smaller disciples, you know, and I'm like, hey, I'm not as built as John or Luke, and, you know, I'm kind of the scrawny one. It's like, hey, I'm going to get some power. Jesus is going to pump me up. I'm going to get bigger. Jesus promised. And so the disciples, they head back to Jerusalem, and, and, and I always got to imagine, too, that in that, that they were scared as to what's happening. Jesus crucified, dead buried, rose again, comes back, speaks with them, hangs out with them, and then ascends into heaven. And now they wait for what? For the Holy Spirit. What's the Holy Spirit? Hear these words from Acts 2 we're going to pick up. Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Here they are in the, the upper room, and you know, I heard uh, someone say, uh, you know, we preachers like to, to paint pictures and, and use words to try to give you a, an idea as to what that might look like. Uh, well, I came across this video that I think kind of helps us imagine what, uh, what these first four verses look like. Start this video. Good to see you again, Stephen. Matthew. What form will it take? When will it come? Jesus said all we have to do is ask. I have been asking. Every day. The Holy Spirit will come when the time is right. I think we should pray together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! 
speak those languages the Holy Spirit he is with us here in Acts 2 uh, the flames and the wind tongues of fire I think are things that gather our attention but imagine for a second here we're just sitting here and having worship service or in the middle of prayer and the doors burst open and a rush of wind blows. And not just that, that then begins to appear on each person sitting next to you and just a little tongue of fire, just something that's just unexplainable that you, you can't imagine. And then, on top of that, people begin to speak in other languages. Not just that which you know, or not just a, a, a mumbo-jumbo, but languages of other people. I think that we would be a little frightened if that were to happen today. I think I would probably be a little frightened, to be honest with you, if the wind uh, blew open the doors. But we like our worship services to be orderly. We like God and Sunday morning to be almost predictable at times. We like our, the Holy Spirit to show up in words of music, but not necessarily in the chaos of a noisy wind or flying flames. We like the Holy Spirit to be tame, some sort of self-control. We don't want our hair to get messed up. And I guarantee you that we surely don't want to start speaking a language that we've never learned. And as usual, the Holy Spirit does its best to get through to us within those boundaries, this order that we find comforting. After all, we tend to think of the Holy Spirit as an advocate or a comforter, and it literally means one who comes alongside us. Certainly there is an understanding that this means to come alongside us as a comforter in, in our confusion and in our despair or to come alongside us as an advocate would in a court of law. But if you look carefully at Luke's description of Pentecost, we notice that the way that the Holy Spirit descends on those gathered disciples is anything but comfortable. We like comfort. We come to the 11 o'clock service, and we have an order of worship, and, and we're going to have a, a prelude, and we're going to have our, our announcements, and we're going to have our pastoral prayer, and then we're going to take an offer. I mean, you know, we have an order. And I think at times that, that we as believers try to, try to put God in that order, that we try to put him in control, that we try to put him in a box. But I think that, I don't think I know that God tries and works so hard to get our attention. That the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of our messy lives. And think about it, if a loud rush, a violent wind sweeps in and fills the house where the disciples are praying. It's not comforting at all. 
But at the same point, it's not just for the disciples. When I was, uh, many of you know that uh, my family and I uh, spent uh, 10 years overseas uh, in Latin America, and and we were uh, living in Peru, and all of our worship services, all of our planning, and had great uh, worship leaders, and all of our uh, singing and uh, church services were all in Spanish. And I, and, I, and I loved it, and, and I, I mean, I, God doesn't even like, I don't like to hear myself sing, and I surely know that God doesn't like to hear me sing. But I love singing, uh, you know, just being able to, <clears throat> to praise God and, and sing some of the same, uh, you know, hymns and the same uh, songs that I knew in English, be able to sing it in another language, and, and that was meaningful for me. I was, I was excited about that, and, and, and to know, to hear the hymn, and, and to know kind of the words, and be singing in Spanish, and thinking, oh, that's what that means in English, and, you know, to be able to translate that. But there was one time, we had been uh, overseas for two years, uh, we had come back to our home church at Gardendale, uh, to our nine o'clock service, and, and we were worshiping, and, uh, you know, and it was <clears throat> kind of an old song, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know what was taking place, but, I, I mean, I was just felt... Like, I wanted to sing this song, and I just remember having my hands up and, and praising God, and, and Trent, uh, my son, uh, I remember him just kind of tapping me, and he was, Dad, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean, what are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm singing. He's like, hey, you're not singing. And I was like, no, I really am. But as I was doing that, and he said, why, you know, why? Why this song? What, you know, what, what's going on? And I said, Trent, you know, one of the reasons that, that, that I do this is because this is my heart language. This is English. I know the words to this. I know their meaning. I don't have to think about how to conjugate the verb, or I don't even have to think about what that word means. It's just naturally, I hear it, my brain processes it, and there's not another step that it has to go through to, to try to figure out. It's my heart language. And that's exactly what took place as this wind comes rushing in. Tongues of fire set on each of the disciples that were there. They began to speak a, another language and not another language. They're not just making stuff up, you know, when you're talking to your cat and bloop, 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 you know. I mean, I do that to my dog all the time. It's not, you're not making stuff up. They're speaking another language. And here's the, the interesting thing for me is, is as they do, I mean, pause that thought for a second. Come back here because imagine for a second that that wind comes rushing in, that outside people heard that. And you saw kind of on the video, like that wind didn't just rush through the room. It's not like someone turned a, a, a big fan on and it blew the windows open. I mean, that wind came through the city. Other people saw and felt the wind, and they were drawn to it. And now, unpause, now the disciples are up in the room, and they begin to speak another language. But what are they speaking? They are proclaiming the Word of God. They are speaking someone's heart language and proclaiming who Christ is. Now imagine if, you know this for a second and, and, you, and you're walking by and this wind blows and you're walking by and you're like, what was that? You hear this, this room and you hear all this different noise that's coming out. And as you're walking by, you hear your language, your heart language. Something that you don't have to filter what that means, because you just know. And as you're hearing that, you are like hearing Christ being proclaimed. It's hard to to imagine that. We were flying back one time uh, after being uh, in Peru. Um, I think we were on year five at the time, and things were, you know, at this time, uh, very fluent. My kids were all uh, reading and speaking Spanish, and it, um, you know, I wish we would say that we spoke it at home, which we didn't. But Spanish was all around us. Well, we flew into Houston uh, and um, sat down to eat to get something to eat before our next flight. 
And as we sat down uh, to eat, there was a TV uh, in the, and behind me. There was a TV in front of me at this restaurant that we were at. The restaurant was full and everybody was speaking. It was quite loud. And Kelly said, aren't you stressed? I said, what are you talking about stressed? I was like, I understand everything that's taking place. It was almost like a, a weight had come off my shoulder that I didn't have to process what was being spoken, because I, again, I just knew. What I heard, I understood. Now imagine if that is you. Imagine that, that you walk in the streets, the wind blows, and as you're walking by, you hear that language. You hear your first language. For all of us, I'm sure it's English. For others, Latin, Greek, Hebrew. Other words that I probably can't even say. Uh, other languages. But imagine they hear that. You know, Luke doesn't say specifically the disciples uh, go outside. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think there's any possible way that the disciples could have stayed inside. The violent rushing winds must have propelled them outdoors. Where people from every nation can identify their own language. And as people question what's going on, Peter stands up. Peter, of all people, stands up with the explanation. And he addresses. And as he addresses, he starts off with all who live in Jerusalem. So we get the sense of the wind and flame, the wind and the flames inside the house has spilled over to the streets. The Holy Spirit is on the move. The word Pentecost takes on a new meaning. It means more than just a Jewish festival. It means more of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It signals the beginning of Christ's church. The kingdom of God is no longer confined to the heavenly realms. The kingdom of God is not just at hand. The kingdom of God is not near. The kingdom of God is here. And now, those rustic Galileans speaking multi multitude of languages certainly captured the attention of all the people who have crowded in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Capturing the attention is one thing, but explaining it or making sense of it is another. The crowd wanted an explanation. They were looking for meaning. And Peter addresses the question in verse 12. Peter points to the prophet Joel. Joel's original testimony about God takes on a new meaning in the person of Jesus Christ as the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Peter emphasizes how God's Spirit is bestowed on all flesh, given to young and old, given to men and women alike for one purpose, and one purpose only, to proclaim the glory of God of God. Now stop for a second and, and, and imagine if we, if, we, if we could of being there and you hear Christ being proclaimed and you ask, what is this about? What is this? And Peter gets up and explains the prophet Joel. But imagine for a second church family that, that that Holy Spirit that was poured out to the disciples, that was given to them, was given to us. We have the Holy Spirit dwells with inside of us. It's not a separate baptism. It's not something that, that you have to come and we lay hands on you. It's not if you were dunked or submerged. It's not if you're a Jew or a Greek it's not if you're Methodist or Baptist. Every believer has a Holy Spirit that's a part of them. And we are empowered to do what? To bring glory to God. To bring glory to God. And to speak His word and His truth. You know, I was reading uh, some stuff and... Um, 
Guys, I, I know our church, uh, as I'm on the prayer and assignment team and um, been reading uh, so much information and other things, um, talking to other pastors, talking to my Christian friends, uh, speaking to just other people, reading articles. I got to say that I am, in my heart, truly saddened. Not so much that, that our church is, that we're in this voting process, more so that the society outside has stopped looking to the church to be the example. More so that society has stopped looking for to believers to have the answers. More so that, that we as Christians, that we as uh, the body of Christ have not spoken up. That saddens my heart. Chris spoke last week um, in Acts and talked about the church, and I just said that this is the beginning of the church. This is the start of the church. And Chris said last week something that, that stuck in my heart, that, that he said the church is continued, that we're part of this story. That story hasn't ended. It's still continuing. But church family, let me ask you this. Is it going to stop? Is that story going to stop with our generation? Is it going to stop? Will the story of Christ, will it stop? Will the story of, of the church and the existence of the church, will it stop with us? We are the body of Christ. We are the church. Sure, there's some day that we're going to go be with our Heavenly Father. But we also have the opportunity to share and to be the body of Christ so that others know. If we truly look at this example, it's the Holy Spirit as, as it enabled the, the, the disciples at that time. But let's look at this just one little step further. When the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, those that walked with Jesus, those that spent time knowing his teachings, those that saw him crucified, those that saw him after the resurrection, those that saw him ascend into heaven, those that he have heard the word, one is coming. The disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit, it wasn't for them. It wasn't for them. Because what did they do? They didn't get full of the Holy Spirit. They spoke another language, proclaiming God's glory. The Holy Spirit has come to enable us, to help us do what? Proclaim God's glory. It's not just for me. This message, this book, what I hear, what I read, and what I study, yeah, it transforms my life. But as my life is transformed, then I'm able to share that with somebody else. And it's not just your pastors, you, as a believer, as someone who is spirit-filled, has that same anointing, has that same Holy Spirit that I have. The Spirit does not solve our problems, but it invites us to see possibilities we would not have seen otherwise. Rather than remove fear, the Spirit grants us courage to move forward. Rather than promise safety, the Spirit promises God's presence. Rather than remove troubles, the Spirit enables us to keep our footing amid the troubles. 
I've got, uh, as we move forward and start to close this, there's five little truths or uh, kind of what I call the, the Holy Spirit 101 to kind of help us a little bit uh, identify who the Spirit is. And the first one is the Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity. It's fully God. It's equal to God. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit enables us to glorify God. It's not a force. He's a person. The second truth is the Holy Spirit's primary task is to manifest the active presence of God in the world and glorify Christ. The Holy Spirit moves to bring God's power and presence out into the world. The third truth is the Holy Spirit helps Christians in many ways, including convicting, comforting, teaching, preserving sanctifying and empowering. Jesus himself said it is better that he go away so the Holy Spirit, the helper, could come. I've heard it say this way, the Spirit inside you is better than Jesus beside you. The fourth truth is the Holy Spirit indwells all believers fully at the time of their conversion. And the fifth is the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to all believers in various ways for the building of Christ's church. Because I'm going to challenge us that uh, if you don't know uh, what your spiritual gift is, if you've never uh, looked at that, if you've never known what that is, uh, there's a lot of things on the internet and just type in spiritual gifts and you'll get a listing of uh, what they are. Uh, look them up in your Bible, uh, spiritual gifts. I don't have time today to, to get into that. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks uh, that we can start uh, looking at and you guys can start finding out what your spiritual gifts are uh, to help you. And to help you uh, work on your strengths so that we can glorify Christ. Because I want to challenge you this week uh, to hear uh, this out of 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, For the Holy Spirit, God's gift, does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. I'll read that one more time because that comes out of Living Translation. 2 Timothy 1.7, For the Spirit of God, God's gift, does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. I mean, it's worth to be with people and to love them, regardless of who they are, regardless of what they think. And what your thoughts are, we're to be with them. We want to enjoy being with them. And we're going to love them. And through that, we'll be able to share who Christ is. I challenge you this week as uh, you go uh, in my closing is, I want you to ask just a simple question. God, where are you working in my life? Where are you working and how can I be a part of what you're doing? So basically, God, where are you in my life? Where are you working? And how can I be a part of it? Let's pray. God, we thank you uh, for this morning, uh, Lord, and uh, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that uh, you are the one that enables us. God, that it's not by our strength, it's not by my strength, Lord, that it is uh, through your Holy Spirit that we're able to uh, speak and to be truth. Lord, that we are able to be a light into this darkened world. Lord, that we are able to love others as you have loved us. God, that we are able to forgive as you have forgiven us. Lord, I pray this morning as we go forth as uh, your church and your people that, that you would remind us that your Holy Spirit lives within us and that we are a part of the growing, the mobilization of your church. That it's not just for us, it's not just for us to hear your word, but it's to take it with us and to share it with others. And not just to share it, but to be that living embodiment of your word. 
Lord, forgive us where we failed you in that. Lord, I pray that you would empower us in this time. That we as your church here at Latham would stand. And that we would be your body. Spirit filled. Ready to serve wherever you lead us. And for that we're going to give you thanks. And we're going to give you praise. In Jesus name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 338, Where He Leads Me. Please rise and join us again. That's number 338 in your hymnal. We will be singing verses 1, 2, and 4 this morning. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory and go with him, with him all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. As you go forward this week in your daily lives, in your daily tasks, go forward with the power with the one that has enabled us, the one that has equipped us, with the one that is going to help us and guide us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah.